Hi guys, today I am going to lead you through an advanced practice. Advanced, so if you're not at the advanced level, please do not do this practice. Um, I won't be offering a ton of modifications. I would expect that you would know how to modify if you're doing an advanced practice. We're gonna chuck in some arm balances, plenty of opportunity to handstand. Again, I may not always cue you to take a handstand, but if that's in your practice, then you can go ahead and do that. Sorry guys, <laughs> men, huh? Anyway, um, all you need is two blocks. And what we're gonna focus on today is really building some heat and some core strength, and then we're gonna work the transition of jump through and jump back. Okay, so let's get started in child's pose. Um, excuse me, sir. You guys can come into child's pose. Ay, ay, ay. All right, child's pose. Reaching the arms out. Hips back towards your heels. Maybe sway your head from side to side. Maybe open and close your mouth a few times. Maybe exhale through the mouth, clearing any stale air or energy. And then even though this is an advanced practice, remember it's not always about the poses or the postures. But taking this practice a little deeper as we begin to ask ourselves those hard questions, as we get uncomfortable, we notice our reactions. So let go of any expectation that you have for today's practice. Your body's going to feel different today than it did yesterday. And really the biggest challenge in this practice is just to stay present, to be a witness to your thoughts, your feelings, your reactions. Five more deep breaths here. tabletop position. Come to your hands and your knees. Let's begin by spinning the fingers around to face your knees. We'll inhale, drop the belly for cow pose. Exhale, press the floor away from you, cat pose. Again, inhale, drop belly. Exhale, round. One more inhale. And exhale. Find a flat back, spin your fingers out towards the edges of your mat and just sway from side to side. Maybe you pause to take a little circle on one hand, just gently warming up the wrists and forearms. And for the interest of time, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time warming up the wrists. If you know that your body needs a little bit of extra work in this area, then maybe hit pause and you can spend a little bit of extra time warming up. This is the last little thing we're gonna do here. So I've got my fingers facing back towards my knees, top of the hands on the floor, stretching out the forearms. And you'll uh, flip the hands back around so the fingers face forwards. Back into tabletop position, have the tops of the feet on the floor though. Now inhale through cow pose, drop the belly, lift sternum, lift sitting bones. Exhale through cat pose, this time hover your knees just an inch off the floor. Look towards your navel, really round your upper back, press down through the tops of your feet and then gently lower the knees back down. Inhale through cow pose. Exhale through cat. Straighten the arms, look towards your navel, hover the knees. Imagine you had a knitting needle behind your navel, just pulling it back, 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 and then lower the knees down. 
Let's do one more. Inhale through cow. Exhale, cat. Hover the knees, press into the tops of the feet. Pull the navel back. And lower the knees all the way back down. Tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back. Downward facing dog, Adha Mukha Shvanasana. Take some time here to get settled. If there's any wriggles or movements that you need to take, feel free to take those. Just being aware of when you're moving out of habit rather than from what your body actually needs in this moment. Dropping into your ujjayi breath. Just being aware though when you overwork the breath. And if you feel like you begin to sweat too much or you're overheating with ujjayi, then you can always just drop that. Breathe in and out through the nose. Exhaling as and when you need through the mouth. Feel the connection of your body to the floor, to hands, to feet. Pressing the floor away from you. Really spreading your fingers, pressing down through the finger pads, finger knuckles. Finding length through your spine and then pulling your front ribs towards the back ribs. Navel lifts up. Feel your inner thighs spiral towards the back of the mat. Walk your hands to your feet. Circle out through your wrists a couple of times. Maybe flick your fingers. Ragdoll position, holding opposite elbows. If movement is needed here, find it. Otherwise, staying still. Really allowing your upper body to get heavy. Your neck is long. Change which forearms on top. Notice the difference. If you're pressing your hips back, try to shift them forwards a little bit more so that your hips are really stacked on top of your ankles. And you'll automatically notice that the belly has to switch on somewhat to prevent you from falling over. Hands back to the floor, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up. Exhale, right knee to right underarm, shift forwards and really squeeze the knee up nice and high. We're gonna do this three times. Slide your knee to tap your wrist and then pull it all the way back up. Again, slide and tap the wrist, pull it back up. Last one, slide and tap, pull it back up. Inhale, extend the right leg up, bend the knee, open out through the hip. Maybe take some circles here. This doesn't have to be anything specific. And then set your right foot down. Inhale, reach the left leg up. Exhale, left knee to left underarm, shift forwards more. Three times, slide the knee to tap the wrist, pull it back up. Again, slide and tap, keep your arms straight, pull it up. Last one, slide and tap, pull it back up. Inhale, extend the left leg, bend the knee, open up through the hip, circle it out. Continuing to keep your arms straight here, taking those circles back in the other direction. And step the left foot next to the right. Inhale, come forwards, high plank position. Lower down onto your knees for modified plank, just to begin with here. So we're gonna set up our scapular push-ups. So you're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades together and then press them away from one another. So squeeze, retract the shoulder blades, press, protract. So once you have that action down, notice I'm not doing cat-cow, it's just movement through the upper back. You can always do this then with the knees lifted. 
So what's required for jump throughs and jump backs is the ability to really protract the shoulder blades. So you're just starting to imprint that movement here. Let's go for five, four, three, two, last one, lower to your belly. Fingertip cobras, hands wider than the mat. Inhale, curl your chest up. Exhale, release back down. Two more, inhale, curl up. And release. Last one, inhale, curl up. This time drop the left shoulder blade, look over your right. Inhale, come back through center, drop right shoulder, look over the left. Back through center and to your belly. Push back up for high plank. Downward facing dog. Walk your feet to your hands. Choose another forward fold here. So you could wrap your arms around your legs. You could interlace the hands behind your back. Just go with pretty much like the first thing that comes into your mind. It's probably what your body is really craving. And use this as an opportunity to let go of any remaining tension that you might be holding on to. You don't need it for practice here. Release your arms, press into your feet. Begin to roll yourself all the way up to standing. And at the top, roll your shoulders back and down. Gather your hands into prayer and allow your eyes to close. Perhaps setting an intention for your practice today. Inhale through your nose. Open mouth, exhale. Release your arms and allow your eyes to flutter open. Inhale as you sweep your arms up, big stretch, reach up. Exhale, bend the knees, fold forwards, Uttanasana. Inhale to lengthen, Ardha Uttanasana. Step back, plank pose, just for this first round. So again, you guys are advanced yogis. You know how to modify, when to skip things out. Really draw your navel back to your spine, squeeze your butt. Inhale, shift forwards, lower chaturanga. Come to your belly, find cobra pose. Inhale, curl the chest up. Release back to your belly. Push up, high plank, don't drop your head. Downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here. Leading with your least favorite foot, begin to walk your feet forwards, fold forwards. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold. Rise to stand, reach up. Hands to prayer. Four rounds on the breath. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. Step the feet together, bend your knees, inhale, look forwards, take a little jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Rise to stand, reach up, hands to prayer. Again, inhale, reach, exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend, downward facing dog, three deep breaths. Bend your knees, inhale, look forwards. Take a little jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Rise to stand, reach up. Hands to prayer. 
Again, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. Three breaths. Now, if you want to add a little bunny hop to get your feet forward, step your feet in a little, bend the knees, keep your arms straight and strong, take a little jump to the top of the mat, maybe some hang time, and feet forwards. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, fold. Raise to stand, reach up, hands to prayer. Last round, inhale, reach, exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. Step your feet in, bend the knees, inhale, look forwards, jump to the top of the mat, maybe a little bunny hop, maybe a little bit of hang time. Step your feet forwards, inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold, rise to stand, reach up, hands to prayer, chair pose, sit low, reach the arms up, lift your lower belly off your thighs. Find an essence of cobra in your upper back so you're lifting the chest. Take another full breath in. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. Spin the left toes out, step the right foot up. Warrior one, we're gonna pause here in warrior one. So just for this first round, get your bearings. Check in with the hips and the legs. Again, lifting the lower belly. Take another full breath in. Exhale, hands down, step back, vinyasa. Spin the right toes out, step the left foot up. Inhale, warrior one, reach up. I'm just gonna adjust my mic, guys, it's all good. Last full breath in. Exhale, hands down, vinyasa. Three breaths here in dog. Step your feet together, bend your knees, inhale, look forwards, take a jump, maybe a little bit of hang time, keep the arms straight. Feet to the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Chair pose, sit low, reach the arms up. Lift the lower belly. Rise to stand, Tadasana. Three rounds, Surya B on the breath. Bend the knees, inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. Spin the left toes out. Step the right foot up. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, hands down. Same breath out, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. Spin the right toes out. Step the left foot up. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, hands down, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here. Step your feet together and in a little bit. Bend the knees. Inhale, look forwards. Jump, maybe float to the top of the mat. Feet to your hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Chair pose, sit low, reach your arms up. 
Rise to stand, Tadasana. Again, inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. Spin the left toes out, step the right foot up. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, hands down, vinyasa. Spin the right toes out, step the left foot up. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, hands down, vinyasa. Three deep breaths here. Step your feet in, bend the knees, inhale, look forwards. Arms straight, little jump to the top of the mat, maybe a little bit of air time. Feet to your hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Chair pose, sit low, reach your arms up. Rise to stand, Tadasana. Last round, inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. Spin the left toes out, step the right foot up. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, hands down, same breath out, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. Spin the right foot out, step the left foot up. Inhale, warrior one. Hands down, step back, vinyasa. Three breaths in dog. Catch your breath, soften it a little. And it doesn't matter if you're not getting any airtime in these jumps, right? All that matters sometimes is that you keep giving it a go. And it's gonna take a long time to get these jumps if that's where you wanna go. Right, and I'm not saying that to <laughs> scare you or to put you off, but just, you gotta just keep doing it and then your body will find a way. So step your feet in, arms over straight, bend the knees, look forwards, take a little jump, maybe get some air time. Feet to your hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. <sighs> Chair pose, sit low, reach your arms up. Rise to stand, Tadasana. Chair pose. Reach your arms forwards this time. Pick your lower belly up off your thighs. Sit your butt back and down a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Come down to a seat. So grab your blocks. You'll place them underneath your hands. And of course, if you don't have blocks, you can still do this. It's just gonna be a little bit more challenging. So you're gonna press into your feet, lift your hips up, reverse tabletop position. And rather than just throwing your head back, look down the length of your body, squeeze your butt and lift the hips up more. Straighten your arms. Now you're gonna to start to swing your hips back through your arms, keep the arms straight, pull your hips back, the heels will slide back, and then maybe lift one, then the other leg, or both legs, feet down. Press the hips back up. Inhale, pull the navel back like you've got a knitting needle back behind the navel. Maybe lift one or both feet. Heels down, feet down. Press the hips up. Good, swing the legs back. Pull them back, lift the feet. Feet down, thrust the hips up. Yes, I said thrust. <laughs> Let's do two more. Pull the hips back. Lift the belly, lift the legs. Feet down. Press the hips up, that's better. <laughs> Last one, pull the hips back, lift. Eee. Sound effects help, feet down. Press the hips up and lower your hips down. Circle out through the wrists a few times. So obviously there is technique that comes into play with a lot of this stuff, but you also just need to repeat it <laughs> over and over and over again. And that's kind of what happens with jump throughs. All right, so block's gonna go off to the side. Malasana. A 
couple of breaths. Let all of that settle. It's quite a lot on the wrists, so if you need to continue to stretch the wrists out, go for it. From here, Bakasana, hands down. We're gonna just stay in the arm balance, right? So lifting one leg, then the other. Don't come to tripod headstand, just build the strength in your shoulders here, in your arm balance. Breathe five, lift the belly, four, three, two, and one, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg. Right knee to right underarm. Three times, slide it down to the wrist. Pull it back up. Again, slide and tap. And lift. Again, slide and tap. And lift. Extend the right leg up. Square off the hips and keep your right leg straight now. So you're pressing back through the right heel. Pull the ribs in. So we're gonna keep this right leg as straight as you can. And there's this sense of pulling the thigh bone, the femur into the hip socket. So keep the right leg straight, like a pendulum, start to swing it through your hands. You'll come up onto the top of the left foot and straight leg, step the right foot to your right thumb. High lunge position, come on up. Reach the arms up. Pull the right hip back, left hip forwards. Maybe a little bend in the back knee. Hands come into prayer, shift forwards, twist to the right, hook your left elbow over your right thigh. If you prefer to open the arms, you know, maybe even take a bind if your body allows for it. Continue to pull your navel back. Inhale, reach both arms back up. Open out, warrior two. And then let's straighten the front leg and re-bend it. Interlace your fingers, press your palms forwards and then reach them up and allow the shoulder blades to lift here. That's their job when the arms lift up. Maybe closing your eyes for the last five breaths. We extend your arms, straighten through the front leg. Inhale, reach forwards, triangle pose. Right hand to your shin or to the floor. Reach the left arm up. Now, if you would like, you could add on a half bind here. You could also interlace both hands back behind you. I really like this version. Um, it gives me a nice stretch through my chest, through the front of the shoulders which is important when we do all of this um, protraction of the shoulder blades. So one of my favorite variations in triangle here. Now, if you have this same arm variation that I have, maybe you keep it and you can look down and forwards when moving into half moon. So lifting the left leg up. You're just working a half bind. Perfect. Maybe you're reaching one arm towards the ceiling and the other to heart center. If you would like the thigh stretch, bend your left knee for chapasana. I'm gonna wriggle my left foot in between my hands. Stretch out through the front of the left hip. Warrior two, step all the way back. Flip the front palm, inhale, reverse. Reach your left arm back as well. Lift up through your left hip. Take another full breath in. Exhale, hands to the floor, plank pose. We're going side plank, blade edge of left foot, left hand, reach your right arm up. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, right elbow and right knee tap. Inhale, extend. Exhale, draw in, four, three, two, last one. 
re-extend everything, plank pose, coming down onto your forearms, forearm plank. And then we're gonna take our scapular push-ups from here. So first of all, squeeze your butt, pull the navel in, and then you squeeze the shoulder blades together, spread them apart. Squeeze and spread. Let's go for another three, two, last one. Sphinx pose, lower the hips down. Pull your chest through your shoulders. Press down into the tops of the feet. Lower your forehead to the floor. Interlace your hands back behind you. Press down into your feet, inhale. Curl the chest up, Shalabhasana. Go for length here rather than height. And release everything down. Downward facing dog, maybe adding in the push up high plank. Downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your left leg. Exhale, left knee, left underarm. Slide and tap the wrist. Pull it back up. Two more, slide and tap. And lift, last one. Lift it back up. Extend the left leg back. So keeping the hip square here, all five of the left toes face down. Drive your left heel back. And then at the same time, feel your left thigh bone, your femur, hug back into the hip socket. Pull your ribs in. So we're keeping that left leg straight like a pendulum. It's gonna swing through your hands. Keep it straight. Try to hover it off the floor the whole time. Step the left foot to your left thumb. High lunge position. Come on up. Little bend in the back knee. Pull the left hip back, right hip forwards. Hands come into prayer, twist. Hooking right elbow over the left thigh. Maybe you're choosing to open the arms. Maybe there's a bind available to you. Notice if you're overly deep in the hips and try to lift out of that a little bit. Inhale, reach your arms back up. Open out, warrior two. Straighten your left leg for a moment and then re-bend the left knee. Interlace the hands out in front of you, change up the wrap of the fingers, press the palms forwards and then allow the shoulder blades to lift as you reach your arms up. Keep pulling your front ribs in. Five breaths here, maybe closing your eyes. Re-extend your arms, straighten through your front leg. Inhale, reach forwards, trikonasana, left hand down, right arm reaches up. So get your legs working, your feet working, and then maybe adding on the variation that you did on the first side. Spinning your chest to the right. Perhaps keeping that arm variation you've got. Ardha Chandrasana, look down and forwards. Find your way into the balance. So don't let your variation come at the expense of the foundation. Even if you need to reset, sometimes it's hard as we get more and more advanced. We don't want to come back to those basic principles. Maybe you're adding on Chapasana. Stretching out through the front of your right thigh. Warrior two, step back. Flip the front palm, inhale, reverse. Reach your right arm back as well, lift your left hip point. And 
last full breath in. Exhale, hands down, plank pose. Vashistasana, blade edge of right foot, right hand, reach the left arm up. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, elbow and knee tap. Inhale, extend. Exhale, pull in. Four, three, two, last one. We extend, left hand comes down, forearm plank. Squeeze your butt, pull your navel in. Stay here or draw right knee to your right underarm. Extend it back, left knee to left underarm. Extend it back. Slow and steady. Keep pressing the floor away from you. Pull your sternum forwards and again, try not to let your head drop. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Lower Sphinx pose, pull the chest forwards. If you would like to take seal pose instead and lift the elbows, go for it. If there's any discomfort in the lower back, you can either widen your feet or just come back down to Sphinx pose. Lower down onto your belly, Shalabhasana. So reach the arms back behind you, change up the clasp, press into the tops of the feet, and then lift your chest, shoulders, and head. Now, if it feels okay on the lower back, go ahead and lift the legs as well. Spiral your inner thighs towards the ceiling. And release everything down. Plank pose, push up. Downward facing dog. Take an inhale through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Come down onto your shins for a moment. So we're gonna do something, and I'm hoping that I can actually demonstrate this, but um, it's a fun little transition. It used to be in vogue a while ago, and then no one really does it anymore. But we're gonna come into Bakasana, crow pose or crane pose, from downward facing dog, okay? So what you need to do in down dog is step the feet in a little bit, right? And you need to think of the sternum going forwards here, right? So you set up, bend the knees, take the knees wide, really crouch down. So I'm getting my thighs towards my chest. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, Maybe you catch the landing, okay? So obviously I didn't fully get it there. I'm gonna try again, show you. Knees wide, chest towards the thighs. Try and land nice and light. Maybe if you get it, then you jump back. So have a little play time with that. You could always try this as well with blocks underneath your hands. And if you're like, wow, that looks way too hard. I'm never gonna be able to do that. Maybe just watch me do it a few more times. You could rewind, press play. I'm gonna do it again. And start to watch what's happening in my body. You can always video yourself as well and then see what's happening or maybe what's not happening for you. So we're in this short down dog. The knees go wide. We pull the chest back towards the thighs. I'm really thinking of pulling my navel in. That's what's gonna keep me nice and light. Arms straight and strong. It's not gonna necessarily be pretty, and that's okay. Have another go. and I'll meet you in downward facing dog. Inhale through the nose, open mouth, exhale. Inhale, lift your right leg, keeping the hips square, press back through the right heel, pull your navel in. 
and then come up high onto the ball of the left foot like a pendulum keep your right leg straight begin to swing it all the way through hover your right foot at your right hand hover press the floor away from you and then inhale take the leg up and back this is too much place blocks underneath the hands I'm gonna do it two more times swing the right leg through pull the belly in press the floor away from you hover your right foot near your right hand inhale take the leg up and back we've got one more pull it in so you're really trying to make space in your body for that leg to come all the way through you hover right foot near your right thumb and place it down thank goodness <laughs> come on up high lunge position we'll do this five times take an inhale exhale tap the back knee cactus the arms inhale up exhale tap four three two last one reach your arms back up more advanced yogis you're going to do this without your hands standing split so you could bring the arms back alongside you folding your chest over your right thigh the last moment hands come down to the floor I'm just gonna hop back so we have a little more space take another five breaths here in your standing splits or if you'd like a couple of little handstand hops go for it you could also take a little press up like I said not here super long but I know you guys like to get upside down arms are super straight if you're in handstand keep pressing the floor away from you we're going to meet back in standing splits right foot is down now lift your chest up halfway as you exhale draw your knee to your nose really pull it in around the upper back again inhale extend the leg exhale draw in four three two last one kick it back draw the knee in and then again you're going to extend the left leg through your hands bend your right knee pistol squat come down maybe find a little bit of the balance sit your butt down Marichi Asana A so you're squeezing your right leg into you make sure you have about two fists with distance between your right foot and your left thigh reach your arms up your right arm comes to the inside of your right leg now you could either hold the left foot hands could come either side of the leg or for some of you you might have a bind of course use a strap if you've got one and then allow your upper back to round so you're really noticing this theme here of spreading the shoulder blades so for a lot of this kind of stuff that we're doing in yoga we really need to give ourselves space in order to find the pose or the transition so in this case a jump through and a jump back by rounding the upper back spreading the shoulder blades we're going to create some space which you'll see shortly and come all the way back up now go ahead and grab your blocks I'm certainly going to be using mine here you're going to bend both knees you'll cross your right ankle over the left so we're going to go right leg on top of left lolasana press your hands into the blocks so you're going to squeeze the knees in start to lift your butt maybe your feet heels and then try to swing a little bit and sit your butt back down good circle out through the wrists so obviously we know this takes core strength it takes strength through the shoulders but you also need to have the ability to really curl into a nice tight little ball okay so if you feel like hey I'm working my shoulders and I'm working my core but something's missing try squeezing your knees in tighter so we're going to do this again you might swing like a pendulum you might even be able to jump the feet back and we'll meet back in downward facing dog okay so right leg in front of the left really pull them in make a nice tight uh, little round squeeze yourself in 
straighten the arms, maybe swing, 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 Ugh. maybe jump back, downward facing dog. Taking the blocks off to the side. Left leg lifts up and back, keeping the legs straight. So here we go with this hip flexor work. You're gonna swing the left leg through, keep it straight, flex the foot, round your upper back, hover your left foot next to your left hand, and then inhale, take the leg up. Two more, bring it through, pull the navel in, press the floor away from you, hover the left foot, take it back up. Last one, pull it through. Remember, you can always use blocks underneath the hands, hover. Step left foot to left thumb. Come on up, high lunge position. Pulling the left hip back, right hip forwards, lift this lower belly. Take an inhale. Exhale, tap the back knee, cactus the arms. Inhale up. Exhale, tap. Four, three. Two. Last one. Reaching back up, standing split. So if you like, do this without the use of your hands, at least for a little bit. Starting to just work your balance a little deeper. So as the head comes down, your right leg lifts up. Keep pulling the belly in. Hands come to the floor. I'm just gonna hop back on my mat a little bit. And then either hang out in standing splits for another five breaths or work your handstand hops. Maybe there's a press for you from standing splits. If you're in handstand, really zip up through your inner thighs. Squeeze your inner ankles. We meet in standing splits, left foot is down, right leg stays up. Lift the chest up halfway, exhale, draw your right knee to your nose, round, pull it in, pull it in. This is similar to where we're going in Lalasana. Inhale, extend, exhale, pull it in, round. Three more. Four, two. Last one. Pull it in, extend your right leg through your hands, bend your left knee, pistol squat, maybe get some balance and sit your butt down. You'll hug your left leg in nice and close. Make sure you have about two fists width distance between your right thigh and your left foot. Reach your arms up and fold. So your left arm comes to the inside of the left leg. Maybe grabbing the foot maybe taking a bind. and lift the torso all the way back up. So grab a hold of your blocks again, working Lolasana. So you might have seen on the first side, I don't have, or I generally don't have a clean full jump back. I find it really, really challenging. So the aim here is not necessarily to completely smoothly jump back, it's just to learn and to practice, right? So we're gonna go left leg up and over the right. So crossing left ankle in front of right, Arms down alongside you, pull the knees in, make yourself a teeny tiny ball, and then lift up. Maybe swing. And set the hips down. Circle out through the wrists a little. Whew. Obviously anatomy can come into play here a little bit if you have longer arms, maybe short legs. If you've got short arms and long legs, this is very challenging. All right, last time on this one, maybe you're gonna jump back on this one. Don't 
expect it to necessarily look super clean. <sighs> Downward facing dog. Take an inhale through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Come down onto your knees and your shins. So we're gonna work the jump through portion now. Um, there are a few different ways to do this. Some people like to get a little bit more hang time, so it's almost like a handstand, and then you can like control the entry down. Some people like to uh, use a little bit more momentum which is fine as well. So my, my thing for you is that if this is new work to you, find the way that works best in your body, refine that, and then you can add on or make it more challenging. So just so you have a visual, what you'll do is you'll find down dog, you'll step the feet in a little. Yeah, so you're shortening your dog. So if I'm just kind of trying to get my feet through my hands, I'm gonna bend the knees and I'm gonna cross my ankles as I jump through. So bend the knees, look forwards, cross my ankles. You can swing through. Now you could also wear socks and do this on a slippery floor. So again, if you were gonna have a look at that, bend the knees, I'm gonna cross my ankles and go through. Not super smooth, that's okay. Maybe that's just your work and you can change which leg is crossing in front of the other. If you wanna to start to work a little bit more of an advanced variation, you'll find a little tuck handstand. And then as you slowly lower down, pull the knees in and come through and lower down. Now you can also do this with straight legs. So you would pike handstand, keep the legs straight and swing them through. And that really is that same action of pulling the thigh bone back to the femur. So I'll give you a visual of that and then we'll do some play time. So if you have <laughs> short legs and a long torso, this is definitely a little bit easier. So I'm gonna find my pike handstand. Now I keep pulling my belly up. Feet come through and lower all the way down. Okay, so have a little bit of play time. Remember blocks underneath the hands are super useful. You're finding your short down dog, maybe just jumping the feet through and you can jump back. If you're feeling cooked, maybe that jump back doesn't feel so good. But like I was saying before, the best thing you can do here is find the way that is most natural in your body. Start to refine that. Like me with my left foot forwards just always feels, or my left ankle crossing over, always feels way more challenging, right? Not entirely sure why that is. So because I'm trying to learn this skill, I'm gonna just go with my right leg forwards. And then once I've kind of really solidified that skill, that action in my body, then I can work on the other side. So do one more, and then we'll meet in Paschimottanasana, a seated position. Sitting up nice and tall, removing the fleshy parts away from the sitting bones. Reach your arms up. Exhale, fold. And for this variation of Paschimottanasana, I think it's nice to try to lengthen the lower back a little bit more and then pull the chest forwards. So it's like rather than rounding, which we've already done a whole heap of, we're pulling the chest forwards, broadening the collarbones. and lift all the way back up. Hands behind you, bend your knees, reverse tabletop, lift the hips up. And 
So we're just gonna do one more round of jump back and jump through. So sit your butt back down, grab the blocks if that's what you're working with. I'm gonna go right leg in front of left just because it's slightly easier for me to find it on this side. And then we lift up, we're gonna swing, jump back, vinyasa, downward facing dog. And then we're gonna jump through and meet in a seated position again. Right leg will stay extended this time. Bend the left knee, sole of the left foot to your inner right thigh. Inhale, reach up. Twist a little to the right and then fold over the right leg. Press your right heel down into the floor and then try to squeeze your right heel back towards your right hip. Lifting all the way back up, changing sides, extend the left leg. Janu Shishasana, reach the arms up. Twist a little to the left and then fold. And lifting all the way back up, extend the right leg. We're gonna come down onto our backs. And let's actually bend the knees and take the feet as wide as the mat, allow the knees to knock in. Just rest here for a moment. And we're gonna move into back bends. And really today I want you to think of the back bends as an opportunity to stretch out through the front of the body. So we did a lot of that really like rounding through the upper back. You know the action that I'm talking about. So now we want to counter that work. So we'll begin with a bridge pose, heel toe the feet, back to hips with distance. I like to hold onto the outer edges of the mat and then lift up. Bridge pose, wriggle the shoulder blades together, interlace the fingers. So again, focus the stretch here through the front of the body. And lower your hips all the way back down. We'll take wheel pose. Bring your hands alongside your ears. Spreading the fingers, pressing down through the finger pads. Lift up onto the crown of the head and then lift up, wheel pose. So again, focus the stretch on the front of the body. Now, I like to straighten my legs here. So you might like to extend both legs so you can bring the feet together. It's just a really nice way of stretching through the front of my hips. Obviously, if it doesn't feel good in the lower back, don't worry about it. Walk your feet back in and lower all the way back down. Take a breath or two here. So we have a final back bend and you're ready, making your way up into the back bend that your body is calling for. Remember, just because this is an advanced class doesn't mean that every single pose has to be really fancy or really deep or full of sensation. You wanna try to have a well-balanced, a well-rounded practice. So if you worked really hard during those jump backs and jump throughs and crow and handstand, Maybe it's nice to let this be a little softer. And release all the way back down. Find supported rest pose again. 
feet wide, knees knock in. Take your arms out wide. And then both of your knees over to the right. Back through center and to the left. Center to the right. Center to the left. Back to center and then over to the right. Hook your right ankle onto your left thigh. Pressing your left knee forwards and down. And again, focus this stretch here through the front of your left hip. You know what? If you don't get a stretch, if it doesn't feel super strong, then that's fine too. Take the right foot off your left leg, knees back to center and then over to the left. Take your left ankle onto your right thigh, pressing that right knee forwards and down. And remove your left foot, bring the knees back through center. Take a happy baby pose. And during this pose, just have a little think about how you want to finish practice today. So I always leave you for Shavasana. <clears throat> but something that I would suggest is that you could take Shavasana with blocks underneath your upper back and head. And it might be just a nice way to finish practice, allowing the chest to open a little bit more. So you'd have one block underneath the shoulder blades, one underneath the head. You could always take legs up the wall. You could always take a traditional Shavasana. So as and when you're ready, you'll begin to make your way into your final resting pose, which is where I will leave you today. Do try to stay for about three to five minutes. Otherwise, thank you so much for sharing your energy and your time. Namaste.